Hey everyone, happy Thanksgiving, post-Thanksgiving, belated Thanksgiving. Um, so good to see you all again virtually. And as promised, I am live streaming my reading of my latest essay uh, for Thanksgiving, which is for our times generally, and it's called The Ceremony of Innocence. Here we go. The Hero's Journey and Why Thanksgiving Matters. Yesterday, I walked Loki, our little dog, out of the house in the country where we are spending Thanksgiving. It was a gray, blustery November day. The turning of time was manifest around us. Our neighbor had hunted and killed a beautiful stag. The animal was hung upside down for processing on a crossbar that our neighbor had erected on his property for just this purpose. The creature looked both majestic and sacrificial as Loki and I passed by. A few minutes later on the road, we paused. Seven gorgeous brown orange deer with white tails leapt across our path. They bounded in perfect time like music. They paid no attention to us. Loki stared in wonder. On our way back, we saw a lone deer standing still in a high field. The animal hovered against the yellow gray of the meadow, its outline visible above the roofline of a white colonial house as archetypal as a cave drawing. And there is an archetypal deer. I felt that the deer or its universal essence would still be here in a thousand years, long after the colonial house will have fallen into ruins. Did that living deer know that one of its tribe had been caught up in human plans and was now dead? Did it mourn? Or was something larger than all of us at work in a rhythm I could not quite trace? We were all human and animal just passing through in our physical forms, but something eternal and larger than each of us, a rhythm, a plan was also at work in our spirits, in our world. The last time I wrote a Thanksgiving essay, thankful, a year ago exactly, Loki had been just a puppy. I vowed then always to try to react to the blessings of this world the same way that puppy Loki greeted the morning, leaping out into piles of autumn leaves each time as if every day was an unimaginable, astounding miracle. This year, his puppy phase is over. Time has had its way with all of us. Loki's excitement is still palpable, but as he tugs at the leash and looks back at me to observe my response when there is a moving car or a standing cow in our walk's periphery, it is now a more experienced young adult doggishness. I feel the past year's weight on myself as well. I feel my exhaustion. It was a grueling year, the fourth in a series of grueling years in which every single day we went into battle to fight the forces of a darkness we could never have imagined before 2020. The evil was like a mighty serpent lazing and luxuriating with impunity across the path of history. It was like a voracious dragon that grew stronger and more terrifying every day. Did you know that there is nearly $1 trillion of infrastructure and pandemic funds that have yet to be spent? That's right, there is a massive amount of money that the lame duck Biden administration is pushing hard to spend in their last remaining months. If the president is able to push these funds out, we could see another prolonged inflation surge, just like during the COVID years. And I'm sure you remember the terrible effects that high prices had on most Americans. But there is a way out. A surge in prices can be beaten. A gold IRA from Birch Gold Group is the ultimate inflation hedge for your savings in such uncertain times as these. To see how to protect your IRA or 401k, you should get your free info kit on gold by texting the word daily clout to 989898. Birch Gold makes it seamless to roll over your retirement account while preserving its tax advantaged status. Don't wait for the president's spending spree to tank the dollar further. Protect your financial future now. Text daily clout 
to the number 989898 for your free info kit from Birch Gold. 2020 to 2024 felt as if the maws of hell had cracked open. You could see the flames. You could smell the sulfur. This malevolence sought for four years to grab hold of and swallow up every blessing, children and babies, pregnancy and lactation, love and intimacy, families, holidays, music and theater. This evil sought and still seeks to poison the very skies above our heads, who knows with what, and the very cattle in the fields. This evil sought to close any open church and mosque and synagogue. What is this malevolence? I have teased out the bad actors in my books, The Bodies of Others and in Facing the Beast. Our team of scientific and medical experts has also documented the henchmen and methodologies of hell's own workings in their compendium, the Pfizer Papers. Yes, it is the WHO, it is the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and countless aligned nonprofits. It is the World Economic Forum and its henchmen in the Chinese Communist Party and its network of wicked and spiritually hideous gnomes and trolls in big medicine and big pharma. But these, as I've argued before, are just the human and earthly manifestations of something larger and unearthly. Many have productively labored from 2020 to 2024, identifying who is doing the bidding of essentially the underworld, that dimension that we sophisticates thought did not exist, but that has revealed itself in the past four years to have somehow manifested abruptly onto earth to cohabit with us. This evil sought to seduce or intimidate those caught in the middle unsure of what to believe and with whom to side, to press to death in effect using threats, censorship and economic pressure, if not worse, the small band of resistors who saw this evil for what it was and fought it bravely from day one. It turns out that this malevolent dimension does not only exist, but that it deploys earthly armies, bureaucrats, functionaries, entire ad agencies for God's sake, scientists, physicians, hospitals, presidential <laughs> candidates. But now, now you can feel the earth has turned. <laughs> Darling, can you get the dog? Yeah. Thank you. But now, now you can feel the earth has turned. History has somehow shifted again and the light is balancing the darkness. I've written about how I could not understand the dark presence on earth that manifested from 2020 on, except ultimately metaphysically. The same is true of the slow, gradual, but unmistakable reappearance of the light. Can't you feel it? Can't you feel the sane, blessed state of our nation, perhaps eventually even of the West, returning? The horrors of the past four years were not only that elders were euthanized for money in hospitals and that they died alone, or that laws were passed to allow them to be neglected to death. The horrors of the last few years were not just that Canada and now the UK created spiffy ad campaigns to encourage people to kill themselves. And there you can see or that highly paid influencers on TikTok or Instagram whipped up family division and estrangement, that they told young women not to have children and that they told young adults to divorce their parents and that former superstars such as MSNBC's Joy Reid told people who voted for Harris to shun having Thanksgiving with relatives who voted for Trump. And here's the clip, make your own dinner MAGA. NBC's Joy Reid doubles down on call to ban Trump supporting relatives from Thanksgiving table. The horror behind that horror was that all of this madness, this anti-human evil was normalized, even glamorized. That normalization and glamorization added the feeling of our being existentially alienated from the culture at large to those of us who clung 
to humane values. Magically, that curse seems to be lifting, at least in the US, maybe even from what I hear from liberty activists worldwide in the UK and Ireland, in Europe and elsewhere. There is a sense of the lights being turned on and of evil things slithering back into the shadows where they belong. Craziness feels crazy again, which is a sign of cultural sanity. It's not just politics. That is, this shift in history cannot be explained away purely by secular analyses of mortal politics. Is it Pluto moving into Aquarius, which took place for the first time in 248 years on November 19th, 2024? This astrological shift is supposed to portend visionary transformation and to be about evolution and liberation. I both do and I don't believe in astrology. I'm aware that many of my Christian readers warn me against it. But at the same time, it is hard completely to ignore discipline, especially the more complex, sophisticated Vedic version that has been informing leaders for 3,500 years. The last time Pluto was in Aquarius was in 1777 and 1778, transformational years for all of humanity and especially for the West. Or perhaps this palpable shift is not the result of movement of the planets. Perhaps the shift is not in our stars, but in ourselves, as Shakespeare put it in the life and death of Julius Caesar. Could this shift be a result of prayer and repentance? Could God simply be relenting? If you read the Hebrew Bible, this shift in human history is in alignment with God's pattern and indeed with his management style. Throughout the Hebrew Bible, God will simply give up on what had been a chosen group of people, weary at last of their utter fecklessness and their stubborn resistance to his simple moral requests. Disaster will loom. But at the last minute, either the people's prayer and repentance or the pleadings and virtuous actions of just a few righteous men and women, or even of just one righteous leader will stay his hand or lead him to create a way forward for the people who choose him and for his people of the future. This approach of God's saved Noah and his family after the human disobedience that led to the flood, and that's Genesis 6 to 9. God saved some, not all, of the children of Israel after their collective disobedience at the foot of Mount Sinai in worshiping the golden calf, and that's Exodus 32. Hey parents, I have an early Christmas and holiday gift for you. We've all been there. One minute your child is bouncing off the walls, perfectly healthy, and an hour later, this child is very sick. You feel helpless and it can turn your plans upside down, especially on vacation. After thousands of customer requests, the wellness company has just launched the Kids Emergency Medical Kit. You no longer have to deal with emergency illnesses in a panic. Now you can have six critical medications at your fingertips to treat 20 plus illnesses for issues children have such as strep throat, ear infections, lice, and respiratory illnesses. You can avoid urgent care and hospitals. The Kids Emergency Kit has been hand selected by the Wellness Company's medical board and includes chewable amoxicillin, dissolvable ivermectin, and an optional EpiPen and more. This also includes a detailed guidebook guiding you step-by-step step in emergencies. Ordering this kit is simple. Only parents can order for their children. Fill out an intake form and you will get a verification call for consent. Then it's delivered to your door. Don't wait till you're in the middle of a crisis and avoid late night urgent care runs. Order your kid's emergency kit today and remove panic from your life. And if one or two of the prescriptions run out, there's a replenishment option to restock only what you need. Go to dailyclouthealth.com and grab your kid's emergency kit right now. Use code dailyclout to save up to $40 at checkout. These kits are only available in the USA. Thank you and so on time after time. So have we Americans and maybe even the West 
and maybe even the world been saved from the brink? Have we been given a typical of Yahweh if reluctant second chance? It kind of feels that way. Again, I am not just talking about human politics here. President Trump, of course, has any number of human flaws, but my classical and biblical education has made it impossible for me to look at recent events without seeing a manifestation of deep archetypes. We are all at this moment, it seems, both ordinary mortals and also participants, whether we welcome this or not, in great archetypal battles. It is impossible not to see the classical hero's journey, what author and teacher Joseph Campbell in his classic analysis of mythologies, The Hero with a Thousand Faces, saw as the central mythological narrative arc in what brought President Trump to power again, and indeed in what brought all of us to this moment. Quote, the mythological hero setting forth from his common day hut or castle is lured, carried away, or else voluntarily proceeds to the threshold of adventure. There he encounters a shadow presence that guards the passage. The hero may defeat or conciliate this power and go alive into the kingdom of the dark, brother battle, dragon battle, offering, charm, or be slain by the opponent and descend in death, dismemberment, crucifixion. Beyond the threshold, then, the hero journeys through a world of unfamiliar yet strangely intimate forces, some of which severely threaten him, tests, some of which give magical aid, helpers. When he arrives at the nadir, meaning the lowest point of the mythological round, he undergoes a supreme ordeal and gains his reward. Intrinsically, it is an expansion of consciousness and therewith of being, illumination, transfiguration, freedom. The final work is that of the return. If the powers have blessed the hero, he now sets forth under their protection, emissary. If not, he flees and is pursued, transformation flight, obstacle flight. At the return threshold, the transcendental powers must remain behind. The hero reemerges from the kingdom of dread, return, resurrection, the boon that he brings restores the world, elixir. And that's a long central quote from that classic text, The Hero with a Thousand Faces. I feel as if that narrative arc describes the past four years. We were all brought into the nadir of darkness. We were all forced to look at evil intimately, to feel it in and around us intimately. Did we align with it or succumb to it? Did we resist it in a battle almost to the death? We were all severely tested. Some of us made it back to the everyday world with new blessings. Others did not and are now being pursued in various ways by the fates or by what might be called karma or nemesis. Even recent political history seems to have an archetypal or mythological dimension. Did President Trump survive at least two assassination attempts and no doubt others of which we have not heard by his own agency alone? Did he impossibly turn his head from a sniper's bullet at a critical moment by chance alone? Remember, according to merely human planning, President Trump was supposed to be dead by now. The fates, of course, or karma or nemesis had other plans. Did a conspiracy among one set of DNC insiders to unseat President Biden fall apart in messy Shakespearean infighting? Did one legal case after another against President Trump collapse? Are these cases still weirdly collapsing? Did the Democratic presidential candidate say to Christian students who shouted such things as Christ is King, quote, oh, you guys are at the wrong rally. No, I think you meant to go the smaller one down the street, end quote. Did she really say that? As a former political consultant, I can tell you that that response from a candidate is so very wrong, so bad, so dumb, that it borders on a metaphysical manifestation. Did her campaign categorically fail to attain any momentum after that? Was she simply unable to come back after that? You look at the timeline. You tell me, 
Did one of President Trump's most adamant supporters survive prison, literal banishment to the netherworld, and emerge in Joseph Campbell-esque fashion, asserting greater strength than he had had before? President Trump was supposed to be dead by now. Steve Bannon was supposed to be broken. But the DNC were not reading their Bibles or their classics. As in the scene in the Odyssey in which Odysseus returns in disguise to his home in Ithaca to terrorize and ultimately to destroy the corrupt suitors of his wife, Penelope, men who had disrespected his house and family and worst of all, the larger moral order and who had assumed that Odysseus was lost, real life narratives unfolded differently than the DNC had planned. Odysseus 22 makes clear that the suitors, quote, having had no fear of the gods who hold broad heaven, end quote, was what brought ruin and retribution, quote, the cords of destruction, end quote, upon them. Quote, then with an angry glance from beneath, from beneath his brows, Odysseus of many wiles answered them, quote, ye dogs, ye thought I should never more come home from the land of Trojans, of the Trojans, having no fear of the gods who hold broad heaven, nor of the indignation of men that is to be hereafter. Now over you one and all have the cords of destruction been made fast, end quote. So he spoke, and thereat pale fear seized them all, and each man gazed about to see how he might dis escape utter destruction, end quote. Steve Bannon came back to wield his platform like a weapon, and to warn the agents of chaos who had trusted their own human powers about coming retribution. Most importantly of all, did Americans, did American citizens themselves rise up to do their duty by their country at last? Hey everyone, it's Naomi Wolf. We are excited about our new sponsor, Native Path. Native Path's collagen formula is scientifically backed to increase bone mineral density, accelerate tissue recovery, reduce wrinkles, enhance hair thickness, and strengthen weak or damaged nails. Who wouldn't want more collagen with these benefits? So you can get an incredible 45% off today, plus free shipping. Um, every order comes with a 365-day money-back guarantee, so you can try it risk-free, um, and you really, really should. Uh, are you interested in moving easily and independently without pain or stiffness? Do you want to look in the mirror and see a glow um, rather than fine lines and wrinkles? So you really need to find out about Native Path Collagen, uh, made only with type 1 and type 3 collagen fibers, uh, the two most important types that make up 90% of the collagen in your body. It is completely flavorless and can be added to anything. Coffee, I add it to smoothies, you can add it to oatmeal, and it makes it bioavailable, so it's absorbed more easily and mixes perfectly. There, it's kind of an amazing product. Honestly, I just started using it a few days ago. No fillers, no additives, no artificial sweeteners, and they third party test for heavy metals. What is kind of amazing is that it really does. Um, it makes me want to work out, which never happens. Um, it has made me feel much more uh, energetic, and it's, um, I, I do struggle with. Uh, with the uh, spinal issue. And I honestly have felt much more kind of buoyant and resilient since I began mixing Native Path Collagen into my smoothie every day. So I can't uh, praise this enough. I love it. There are 4 million jars sold, a million happy customers, 8,000 five-star reviews, and a no-risk guarantee. That's the kind of product that we at um, Daily Cloud love to recommend. Um, a, a product that's tried and tested. I, I simply cannot um, recommend it enough. So go to getnativepath.com forward slash forward slash daily clout. That's getnativepath.com forward slash daily clout and um, stock up. Uh, you will find it transformational. Um, I have. And uh, thank you so much, Native Path, for being our new sponsor. And thank you for supporting our wonderful sponsor, Native Path. Did they finally show their collective, quote, agency, end quote, Bannon's favorite word? Did they photograph and document their ballots as we at Daily Cloud had urged them to do wherever it was legal and we posted a map to help them understand the legalities? 
Did they photograph and videotape anomalies at their polling places and alert grassroots watchdogs put in place since the last now clearly proven to have been stolen presidential election? They did by the thousands. In other words, ordinary citizens also stepped up to take their own heroes' journeys. They also stepped up and battled the forces of darkness. I am persuaded, knowing the democratic establishment as I do, that massive cheating was planned by the DNC for election day. I believe it was to be secured via the machine readable code that we identified that was printed along the perimeter of many ballots that were sent in to our election integrity database at Daily Clout. Dozens of ballots we received, received had this machine readable perimeter especially ballots from swing states, such as Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan. As we demonstrated on videos we produced on election day, my own ballot in New York state had that machine code on the perimeter. And as our developer explained, the algorithm in the voting machines, which is proprietary and secret, can read that code any way it is programmed to do. In other words, you can fill out whatever you wish in the circles on your machine read, machine read paper ballot. But if that paper ballot has the machine code around the perimeter, and if the program in the machine is instructed to read that perimeter code rather than your selection in the filled in circles, it will read the code and ignore your filled in circles. Here is my election day video of a democratic poll watcher explaining that he had no idea what the barcode means and that the software code that reads it is, quote, proprietary, end quote. And I link my video. Knowing the DNC, as I do, I am convinced that there were people in place designated to cheat widely using this and other methodologies. But as citizens exposed uh, anomalies such as these in real time, and others in real time, those assets lost courage and peeled away. So I think we can conclude this Thanksgiving that we partnered with fate or with the gods or with God himself by taking our own heroes and heroines journeys, resisting passivity and showing our agency at last as a collective chosen people against the forces of darkness. We beat the darkness back with God's help, at least for now. And that is everything for which we should be thankful today. What we almost lost is more than a partisan victory. And let me stress that being on the right side of history is a moral and not a partisan matter. This group of leaders now victorious can lose the moral high ground in an instant. What we almost lost was the sense of civilization itself. What does it mean to be civilized, to be not animals, to be not demons. The appointment of Dr. J. Bhattacharya to lead NIH, the agency which funds most of the science in America and also in many other countries, is causing joy among people from all walks of life. There are many reasons, but one has to do with people's sense that this appointment is a vote for more than just accurate science. It is a vote toward rebuilding a civilized norm again. I am proud to say that I know Dr. Bhattacharya a bit and that Brian and I would like to call him a friend. I understand from that acquaintanceship, I think, the larger dimensions of this sense of celebration. In a video that Google has now erased from search, I interviewed Dr. Bhattacharya in early 2021 from my fellowship berth at Great Barrington Declaration Convener Jeffrey Tucker's then stronghold, the American Institute for Economic Research in Great Barrington, Massachusetts. Dr. Bhattacharya explained that millions of children in the developing world will starve to death due to lockdowns if they continued, and that low-income kids in the US would lose academic time that they would never be able in their entire lives ahead to regain. Of course, in every detail, he and the other Great Barrington Declaration signatories were correct. And here is Dr. Bhattacharya. The Dr. Francis Collinsons and Dr. Anthony Fauci's of the world were trafficking in pernicious, what they knew to be pernicious lies at that time. 
Dr. Collins also sent emails, again, Google has deleted most of the historical record of this, encouraging the destruction of the reputations of this Stanford professor of public health, along with those of his co-signatories of the Great Barrington Declaration, Dr. Martin Kuhldorf of Harvard at that time, and Dr. Sinetra Gupta of Oxford. I pressed Dr. Bhattacharya to tell me why he was willing to endure so much personally, to be attacked and smeared at the direction of then NIH leader, Dr. Collins, why he chose to face censorship and opprobrium. A tenured faculty member at Stanford, Dr. Dr. Bhattacharya did not have to do this. He had nothing to gain and everything in human terms to lose. After I had pestered him quite a bit, he conceded quietly and modestly something like, I am a Christian. In other words, he could not do otherwise. Now he has Dr. Francis Collins' former job. This script surely goes beyond human, professionally satisfactory, meme-worthy outcomes. This reversal of fortune is again classical or biblical, certainly archetypal. Matthew 20, 18, quote, so the last shall be first and the first last. This reversal script with its beautiful symmetrical upendings could have been written by Moses or spoken by Homer or penned with divine afflatus by William Shakespeare. The widespread joy attending Dr. Bhattacharya's appointment again is more, I would say, than a political or careerist happiness. It is a larger, even metaphysical sigh of relief. Science matters. Science is the purely secular unwinding of material reality. But science is also, to many of us, the interpretation of God's speech and method within his creation. And for everyone serious, secular or religious, the search for a platonic truth that underlies the scientific method is also a metaphysical search, one that valorizes the idea of an impartial, transcendent truth. The perversions of science and of the scientific method that we have seen for the past four years are also attempted perversions of the very nature of reality and of its interpretation. This perversion of science is an, an alignment with the darkest of forces. It is the handing over of creation and of this human search for its deepest laws to the father of lies. Perverting the scientific method and ignoring or misrepresenting objective evidence betray the very principle of truth and the very motive of truth seeking which underlie our Western and post enlightenment ideals. When scientists abandon the truth, objective evidence itself as their guiding star, what is left to the rest of us but chaos? So again, Dr. Bhattacharya is an ordinary if very gifted human being but he is weirdly, as so many of us are these days, also part of an inexplicable dramatic allegory. His leadership represents a return, not just to scrupulous methodology, but to an aspect of a larger civilized moral order. Finally, this brings us full circle to Thanksgiving. Yesterday, we shopped and cleaned, we cooked. Today, of course, I wrote this for Thanksgiving, if we are lucky, we welcome friends and loved ones, and we are grateful that we have enough, if not more than enough, to eat. We give thanks for material abundance. But I think celebrations such as these lead us to be aware as well that we are civilized. We are part of a moral order. Families and communities and societies predicated not on bestiality, on murder, on mutual exploitation, on trafficking of one another, as in the last four years, but on dignity and decency and grace, on recognizing the face of God in one another. So it is not just about being thankful to have enough food today. It is also about being thankful that we have a civilization again. We can be thankful that we are not sitting on the floor eating with our hands. This degradation was actually forced upon school children in Canada during the pandemic. We are not beasts eating from a trough. We light candles. We say a bracha or we say grace. We eat, but we also offer to clear the table. We drink, but we also listen to the stories of the elders for the 10th time perhaps 
patiently, even if we know exactly how they will end. We tell the little, we tell the big ones stories of when they were littler. We take pictures of the little ones for them to enjoy and to help them remember when they are bigger. We may not all be here together again next year. We try to remember to cherish one another. Hopefully we reconnect with one another despite demon helper Joy Reid. And hopefully we heal from the horrific divisions of the past four years. Hopefully before the day is done, we will hug one another goodbye, human warmth to human warmth, woven together again in our hearts against the chill outside. William Butler Yeats in his poem, The Second Coming, spoke about, quote, the blood dimmed tide being loosed to drown, quote, the ceremony of innocence. That was what they wanted for us, the evildoers whom we scarcely and only just now seem to have defeated. The last four years have been about the intentional destruction of ceremonies of innocence, including holidays, holy days, because those are at the core of civilized human society. Poet, Poet Denise Levertov's The Mutes describes the degradation of the human. Quote, life after life goes by without poetry, without seemliness, without love, end quote. They tried to turn us into animals, into demons. They did not ultimately succeed. Poetry, seemliness, love, science, truth, kindness, happy Thanksgiving, let us reclaim them all. And that is my reading for you of my latest essay called The Ceremony of Innocence, The Hero's Journey and Why Thanksgiving Matters. I'm going to sign off now. Thank you all so much. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, let's see if there are any um, comments. I can't see the comments for some reason, but I see many of you are out there. I want to thank you for joining me. I hope you had a beautiful, wonderful, blessed, satisfying, delicious Thanksgiving. I hope you're still having a wonderful, beautiful, blessed, satisfying, delicious Thanksgiving weekend. And um, remember to support us at Daily Clout. Light Against the Darkness, everyone, takes all of you. And support me on Substack. Uh, my Substack is Outspoken. And um, remember to support our sponsors. It really makes a difference. Uh, protect your assets in the chaos and craziness that we know is ahead no matter what. And they are at Birch Gold. You text 989898 and the word daily clout and you will get someone really nice to help you uh, understand how you can protect your assets with a an investment in gold. Also, um, TWC.health, promo code DAILYCLOUT, um, the wellness company, their wonderful supplements, including the spike supplement for those of us and our loved ones who are dealing with spike protein in our bodies from the vaccination, really an important supplement. And, um, Lastly, by optimizers, by optimizers.com forward slash daily cloud. And uh, that is a magnesium supplement that will make you sleep so well, stay so calm and peaceful in these crazy times. So I want to thank you all for joining me and I will see you very soon, maybe tomorrow. And um, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Um, happy Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving weekend. And uh, you know how much I love you. Take care.